Do you want to know the process of a trust? Then you must watch this video with Ben Rust. Hey guys, this is Dave from the Learning Firearms Channel. We're back again. With us is attorney Ben Rust, minnesotaguntrustlawyer.com. Ben is an amazing wealth of knowledge when it comes to gun trusts and estate planning. Plus he's a lawyer, so you know a lot about the law in general, which when it comes to this kind of stuff is pretty good, which is also why I recommend Ben for all of our Minnesota customers and not just 1-800-GUN-TRUST or gun trusts are us. In this video, we're gonna talk about kind of the process of the trust, and this is actually gonna be a two-part video series of the series. The series is more than two parts, but this particular topic we're also gonna split up. So the first things we're gonna talk about is kind of the process of the trust, how to create your trust and who should be in it. Because I think you would agree who is in the trust is probably one of the most important factors. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, you you wanna make sure that you, the people that you're including are uh, people who are appropriate to be sharing firearms with uh, and uh, who you wanna pass them on to after, after you pass. All right, so before we get into the who's, let's talk about the how-to's, how to create your trust. So Ben, I'll let you kind of just dive into you know the process, but let's say we have somebody, they want to buy a suppressor or whatever, and they want to get a trust. You know, Where do they start? What do, what's the first thing they should do? Um, well, the first thing they can do if they're in Minnesota, look at my website, obviously, but um, some of the things to think about are basically, you know, what do they want to do with it? Are they just doing it so that they can share firearms? Uh, do they have um, family members that they want to make sure don't get uh, in trouble for possessing those firearms without being uh, the registered owner? Um, uh, do they have specific um, desires about how they want to pass those firearms on? Um, so just think about sort of what level of complexity you need. I offer multiple levels of trust. Um, there's, there's guys out there that don't need uh, a Cadillac trust and there's people that, that do. Um, so the first thing is just sort of think about what it is that you want to do. Uh, if you're just looking at it to buy one suppressor and you might want to share that with someone else, um, then uh, something simple might, might do it for you. If you have a family uh, or you want to, uh, you have specific instructions for how you want to pass it on after death, um, then maybe something more advanced would do. Yeah, so there's different levels of trust depending on your needs. And that's what's kind of cool with Ben, what I like. And this probably sounds like a commercial, but I don't make any money from Ben. He doesn't pay me anything. I just like sending my customers to people who take care, care of our customers. And that's Ben. He does a really good job. But what's nice, like you mentioned, is that you offer the different levels. And the other cool thing that you should look for in your attorney is see if as you evolve, as your needs evolve, can your trust evolve? So for example, I know with Ben, if I send somebody to him and they decide on his entry level trust, but all of a sudden then they have a family and they start to think you know, more long term, big picture, he offers credit for that trust. So you'd give them the credit of what they paid for that first trust towards right. upgrading and developing a, you know, a better version, right? Yeah, if they want to go something more advanced. Um, the one thing I will say is uh, I get this question a lot about um, guys that, you know, three friends want to go in together and they want to split the cost of a trust and split the cost of a suppressor. That sounds um, like a good idea. Um, it sounds like a good idea, but it's really not. <laughs> um, and, and the reason for that is because uh, th there's going to be one grantor. Uh, there's going to be one trust creator that creates that trust uh, and they're going to have complete control over the property that's in it. Okay. So the other two or three friends that are kicking in the money to do this, they're, they're going to pick one person who's going to be the grantor of that trust. Um, yeah. and this is going to go for the rest of your life until you say stop. Um, so at some point, one of you is going to die first. Uh, one of you is going to get a divorce or uh, a, a bankruptcy or, you, uh, you know, you get a creditor sue you. The assets in that trust are, are or may be um, uh, subject to claims by those people. And how do you figure out who owns what? Um, it, it's, it just creates a lot of problems, uh, and I, I strongly recommend against that. In fact, I, I won't do it for you. Sure. Um, so just to avoid problems. Right. <laughs> your, your trust is your trust. It's yeah. not uh, something that you share with, uh, with three other people. You can each create a trust and share firearms between the, the three or four of you. That's great. No problem with that. But your trust should be your trust. Sure. So think about that ahead of time, you know, and that kind of comes into this. So who should be a part of your trust? Who shouldn't be a part of your trust? And what roles should they play? And how do, what kind of thought should go into that? 
Sure. Uh, well, there's, there's typically going to be um, uh, one grantor. Uh, if folks are married, um, I will create a trust for them where, where they can be joint grantors or, or co-creators of the trust. And they will both you know, jointly control the trust, where stuff goes and, and who's trustees and that sort of thing. Um, but the things you want to think about are basically um, the, th the three roles. You've got the grantor, trustees, and beneficiaries. So the, the big things, you know, you are the grantor. You probably know who's creating the trust. Who do you want as trustees, uh, or who do you need as trustees, and then who do you want as beneficiaries? Sort of the, the folks, the, the, the minimum people I would recommend having as trustees, if you're married, uh, your spouse should probably be a trustee, even if they hate firearms. Um, because if you leave that SBR in the trunk of your car and they're driving down the road, um, you know, you, you don't want to have them have any negative interaction with law enforcement, whether it results in a conviction uh, or not they're going to have a long, uncomfortable conversation with someone at the very least because they're not the registered owner of that firearm. And that um, sounds like an unintentional transfer, but technically in the law's eyes, if they are in possession and you're not present, you as the grantor or the individual on the form, that's a felony. I mean, it's a serious offense. So it, that's a really good point to bring up you know, for families. That's a really, really good Really good point. Right, uh, and then the other things to consider, you know, once you've got the sort of the immediate family members, the people who who you might accidentally come into possession of, of firearms is, um, you know, who all, who all do you think you might want to share this firearm with? Uh, you know, do you hunt with other folks uh, every year? Um, are you a competition shooter? You know, are there other folks on your team that you might want to be trustees? 41F is going to impact this somewhat because the more trustees you have, the more people you're going to have to track down fingerprints for every time you want to buy another um, NFA firearm. Um, so y you want to keep the circle somewhat small, but big enough so that it, it does what you need it to do. So um, when folks call me, uh, I'll kind of talk to them, figure out kind of what it is that they are currently doing and, and sort of give them ideas on, you know, who would be appropriate trustees. Um, the, the next question then would be, who are the, who do you want as beneficiaries? Um, and for um, beneficiaries, there are really two distinct classes of folks. There are what we call lifetime beneficiaries, people who benefit from the trust during the grantor's lifetime. Uh, and those are basically the folks that you're taking with you to the range. They're people okay. who are using the firearms while they're with you, um, but they're not taking them off to the range by themselves. They're not going hunting by themselves. They're not going to a shooting competition by themselves. But could they as a beneficiary? No. Okay. Uh, they would need to be a trustee in order You'd to be a do trustee. that. So okay. you can be a trustee and a beneficiary. In fact, my trusts define any trustee as a, they're also a lifetime beneficiary so that they can use the firearms as well as kind of manage the trust. Okay. Um, and then you, uh, the second class of folks is basically what we call remainder beneficiaries. And they basically get whatever's left in the trust when the grantor passes. You know, you can have folks, uh, individuals, family members, your kids, uh, you know, friends that maybe are into guns. If your whole family isn't really into guns, um, you can provide for them in other ways. Um, and leave firearms to the people that you know will appreciate them. Uh, you can also leave them to, to uh, charitable gun organizations. The NRA has dozens of foundations that do good work. You can make a donation to them. They'll sell the firearms use the, the proceeds to, to support um, whatever particular aspect uh, that you want to do, training, um, conservation, whatever it might be, um, there's, there's a gun org out there that'll, that'll further your goals. And the trust would specify, so if you have all the items on the schedule, because yep. you have to have a list of what the trust owns, you could actually specify in your trust, I want this gun to go to so-and-so, I want this gun to go to so-and-so. That Can you do that um, as well? It, it depends on what level you, you want to do. Um, I have some levels where it just puts everything in a pot and splits it out on a percentage basis. I, at okay. the higher levels, you can you can pick, I want, I want this gun to go to this person. Sure. Whatever it isn't given away specifically goes into a pot and gets split out on a, on a percentage basis. But, um, but broadly speaking, yeah, uh, you have ultimate control. It's, it's just um, how much of that you want to exercise is basically the only sure. um, choice. Um, and then the other things to think about when you're picking beneficiaries, making sure they're not prohibited from owning firearms. Um, thinking about you know whether that person really is capable of dealing with the, the sort of firearms that you own, um, and, and making sure that they you know that they like guns. You know maybe you mm -hmm. want to, you know, a lot of folks when they come in they, they want you know they love their spouse they want everything to go to their spouse. But if your spouse doesn't really want guns, you're not really doing her any favors or, or him any favors. Um, by giving them something that they don't want, uh, you might be better off uh, giving it to someone who would appreciate it. Sure. Now, speaking of beneficiaries and trustees, and as the name implies trustee, one of the th things that comes to my mind is, should you trust the people that are in your trust? Yes. 
<laughs> you should. Um, you know, you, you, you know, you're giving them firearms that you had to wait a really long time to get a hold of and that cost a fair amount of money. So yeah, you want to keep that circle uh, of trust small. Yeah, and that's kind of what goes into that, you know, three guys going in on a trust is probably a bad idea. Now, as life happens, let's say you have a trust, you've picked some trustees, a couple of close friends, uh, you have a couple of beneficiaries. Something happens where, like in life, relationships change. You have a falling out with a trustee. Yep. Uh, so there's some bad blood. As or the doesn't, grantor... It doesn't even have to be bad blood. They, they move away. They get oh, a new job. Sure. Um, yeah, real good Whatever point. it yep. might be. So but let's yeah. just say you want to get rid of a, a trustee. Mm -hmm. Does that trustee have any control of being fired, so to speak? No, uh, the, the grantor of the trust has complete control. They can uh, add trustees whenever they want. Uh, they can remove trustees whenever they want. They have uh, complete control over who is serving as a trustee of their trust. Okay, so the grantor of the trust has some bad blood with a, a trustee. They can release that trustee from the trust and that person then has no claim or involvement then, right? Correct. Okay, and that's good to know because people might have questions, you know, you never know what the future is and sadly in our line of work. We probably see a lot of families fall apart and friendships fail and things like that, which is unfortunate, but we encourage you to pick wisely. A lot of good content. Yet again, we've talked about the creation of your trust, who should and who shouldn't be uh, involved in your trust and what the roles are. I think this is a good time to take a break and you know we'll talk about in the next video, we'll talk about what happens during the lifetime of the trust and maybe what happens after the death of the creator. So I think this would be a good time to, to take a break. So guys, if you have comments or questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. Keep in mind, we can't give you legal advice. We're not a lawyer. You should contact a good lawyer like you know, Ben. Ben, how do they get in touch with you in case they have any more questions than our Minnesota resident? Uh, the best way uh, is just to go to my website, uh, minnesotaguntrustlawyer.com, and uh, my contact info is there. If you'd rather call me, I'm happy to take your calls, emails. You're an easy guy to get a hold of. I'm, I try to be available. All right, if they are not in Minnesota and want a good, competent attorney, where should they go? Uh, the website I tell folks to go to is gunlawcommunity.com. Uh, it's uh, a network of uh, other gun trust attorneys like myself. Uh, I've talked to many of them, uh, and they will do you right, um, treat you well, uh, and get you the advice and the gun trust that will work for you. And they are specialized for your state laws, which is awesome. So that's gunlawcommunity.com. We'll have a link for that in the description as well. So this will conclude this part of the video where we talk about the creation of your trust and people in your trust. Check out the other videos in the series where we talk about Trust 101, 41F, this video, of course, as well as the upcoming video on life and death of your trust, basically. So thank you guys very much for watching. We hope that you're finding this informative. We're learning a lot. We hope you are too. Thanks for watching and have a great day.